Hey, Virginia is sponsored in part by... Everance Financial is grateful to serve this community. As a faith-rooted financial services organization, we're dedicated to helping members grow more confident futures with their values in mind. A community that's doing better together. story of Desmond Doss, a Virginia war hero and the subject of a major motion picture. This month's sound showcase features the soulful melodies of Charlottesville's Aaron and the Wildfire, and we will explore the fascinating art of glass blowing at Stanton, Virginia's Sunspots. That's all straight ahead on Hey Virginia. Mel Gibson's Hacksaw Ridge features the courageous story of Lynchburg native Desmond Doss who in 1945 was the first conscientious objector to receive the Congressional Medal of Honor. Here is his courageous story. The story of Desmond Doss takes us on a courageous journey from the outskirts of the Shenandoah Valley to the war-torn beaches of Okinawa, Japan. It's a story of courage, faith, and steadfast determination that embodies the American spirit. Desmond Doss was born in Lynchburg, Virginia in 1919 his father was a carpenter and his mother worked in a local shoe factory. Doss dropped out of high school after one year and in 1941 moved to Newport News to work in the shipyards. Desmond's life would soon be changed forever as the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor and America would soon march into World War II. Doss was determined to serve his country any way he could with one important stipulation. Desmond Doss is a Seventh-day Adventist. He had been his whole life and so he did not believe in killing even the enemy. So what he did is he went in as a conscientious objector. That way he felt he was serving his country. This didn't go very well with some of his fellow soldiers. They didn't like the fact that he didn't carry a gun. They didn't like the fact that he went into combat without anything, not even a knife. So in April and May of 1945, Desmond Doss was in a lot of fighting along with his comrades. They were in a place called Hacksaw Ridge, which, had, which was definitely a ridge. It had a 400-foot precipice to it. There was heavy fighting in the front lines, and some of the soldiers had fallen back. But Desmond Doss found himself the only medic in the front lines with lots and lots of injured soldiers. What he did is one by one, he carried 75 soldiers from the front lines to the precipice on the ridge. He put a rope around their waist and lowered them down to safety. Then he went back and got the next one and the next one and the next one 75 times. But for Desmond Doss, the story had just begun. Doss was wounded three times during the war, each time displaying bravery and courage above and beyond the call of duty. 17 pieces of shrapnel were pulled out of his arm and he went into rehabilitation. One of the places that he comes to be rehabilitated is the Woodrow Wilson General Hospital between Stanton and Waynesboro, Virginia. And in October of 1945, he is called from Woodrow Wilson General Hospital in, uh, in Fishersville to go to the White House. And when Harry Truman put the, the Medal of Honor around his neck, he said, I would rather have this medal than to be the president. Desmond Doss died 10 years ago now. However, his story is really gonna be coming back. Mel Gibson is directing 
and Andrew Garfield of Spider-Man fame is playing Desmond Doss in a major motion picture called Hacksaw Ridge, the place where he carried those 75 men one by one. The long-term impact of Desmond Doss is probably that, that there's a wider scope as to how someone can contribute to the war effort, that someone can love their country and not do it through the picking up of a gun and actually physically killing the enemy. The art of glass blowing has been around since the last century BC, but at Stanton, Virginia's Sunspot Studios, you can experience the fine art of glass blowing seven days a week. For more information about this unique and ancient art form, we recently spoke with the owner of Sunspots, Doug Sheridan. Sunspots uh, has a long history, evolution, started 30 years ago um, in Charlottesville, um, moved to Stanton about 20 years ago, moved into this building in 2000. So we restored this old building and uh, we have a big glass shop in here and a large gallery. Um, and we get visited by thousands of people every year, school groups, uh, church groups, tour groups. Um, so it's free to the public anytime, so you can come. And you can also blow your own ornament this time of year and most time of the year. Uh, but especially now, you can uh, also blow your own pumpkin because it's that season. And then closer to Christmas, we do uh, just hundreds and hundreds of blow your own. So people come every year as a family, return the next year, and it becomes a tradition for them. Some people have an entire tree of just their blown ornaments that they've blown here. So. It's a craft that's 5,000 years old. So about 2,000 years of that uh, glass has been blown. So before that it was carved and molded and um, cast, but then they figured out how to blow it. So most of the techniques have, have been around for centuries. Um, 
In fact, really all we're left with now is just how we apply these techniques in a new and modern way because there really aren't many new techniques. Um, all the tools we use are hundreds of years old in design. The glass is the same as it was back then, so it's all worked the same. Uh, first, I did a lot of metal work, so for the first half of my this current career, uh, I worked in copper and did a lot of things. I did lanterns for Monticello. Uh, I've got some yard or, or sculpture at the Smithsonian, actually, in metal. And about that time, I started, uh, I moved to Stanton and moved between two glass blowers. And that's really how I got involved in glass because I immediately was putting their glass in my copper work. And um, that, that was a long ride. We, we wholesaled that line for many years and uh, that's how we ended up in this big building. And now we just retail it. So everything we make here, it's made in USA, made in Virginia, made in Stanton. Uh, so when you come here, you know everything has a story and you can see it being made. The state of Virginia has many natural wonders to visit, and here's one you won't want to miss. Lake Shenandoah is a public lake that offers fishing and so much more. Today we're at Lake Shenandoah in Rockingham County. It's a 36 acre impoundment and it's a great place to come and fish. We've got lots of different fish in this uh, particular reservoir. We have largemouth bass, bluegill sunfish, black crappie, channel catfish, and muscalunge. And it's a, a great place to bring the family. There's uh, walking trails around the lake. Uh, there's a, a boat ramp that you can access the lake with. We even have a fishing pier uh, with a handicapped accessible trail to it. Um, so there's a lot of options there for families to come out and fish. Uh, the sunfish population is, uh, is incredible. There's tons of them out there, so a great opportunity for kids to get involved with fishing. And for those that like a little bit more of a challenge, we have muskie that can get as big as 48 inches. So they're, they're a trophy of a lifetime. Recently, uh, myself and some of the other biologists have put in some artificial fish reefs within the lake. Um, these are marked with buoys, um, so if you're in a boat or can, can reach these uh, buoys from the bank with a cast, um, you can target these areas to look for uh, some of these fish. We also put in some pine trees that are actually sticking out of the water a little bit this year, so you can actually easily see the, the habitat and target those for some of the, uh, the bass and muskie and some of the sunfish. If it's sport or tranquility you're looking for, visit Lake Shenandoah. It's another example of the natural beauty that the state of Virginia has to offer. Our Virginia Sound Showcase this month features another up-and-coming band from Charlottesville. Aaron and the Wildfire create a unique brand of soulful rock music that has helped to establish them as one of Charlottesville's premier music acts. Ladies and gentlemen, Hey Virginia presents Aaron and the Wildfire. Undergrads, we were in a student recording group together, um, and we just started playing together in 2011. Um, 2012. Yeah. Um, A group, so it's um, collaborative, collabor colla collaborative collaboration. Um, like that. We, like that. so I often present ideas, and then we kind of arrange as a group and we work things out together. It's really fun. So these guys are really funny, and they're really fun to perform with, and they're they're high energy, and 
cracking jokes, not necessarily good jokes. And I mean, I do Usually this. Usually not. Good. Matt, but, but yeah. mostly bad ones. <laughs> Some good jokes. It makes the good ones special. Um, but performing is really exciting. It makes me feel most alive. It's definitely what I'm meant to do, I think. Our plans are to try to gain as many fans as possible and, and try to uh, perform our music for a living. Yeah. We all have day jobs um, so that we can support ourselves and also make our art. Um, and we've been getting into the festival circuit more and more and we'd love to play more of those because that's where we gain the most fans at one time. Who, who are your musical influences? Uh, Steve Gadd. Oh, Garen. Uh, James Jamerson. Uh, uh, Gabe Nelson. Uh, uh, I will say Niall uh, Rogers. Hey, I'm feeling... Hey, Aretha Franklin right now. So stop and hear me out. Let me know if the rules will allow. So just trying to gain some traction in Virginia and then keep touring once we get some moolah to be able to do that. Yeah, some, some people knew the lyrics to our songs tonight and that's a definite win in my book. One hundred and fifty years ago, the selfie would be impossible. The art of photography involved an intricate and detailed process. Photography has come a long way since then, and you can enjoy its engaging history from the 1850s and on at Stanton's Camera Heritage Museum. Roll it. The Camera Heritage Museum, located in Stanton, Virginia, houses a unique collection of antique cameras that date back from the 19th century all the way to the digital era of today. The Camera Heritage Museum was created to display and preserve a collection of over 2,000 cameras, as well as accessories and photographs, that all serve as a testament to a technology that continues to evolve and grow. The museum's collection offers visitors a truly compelling glimpse into the fascinating world of photography. We are the only camera museum in the United States open to the public. Uh, we're almost 5,000 cameras in inventory now. I started collecting in probably 19... 1970 when I graduated from high school. Without the camera, we would not know what people look like, what our families look like, what our uh, surroundings, nature, everything. Without the camera, all we would have is watercolor or paintings. And that is an artist's representation. That's not an accurate representation of how somebody actually looks. This is the actual camera used at Pearl Harbor by the Japanese. Uh, it was donated to us about 18 years ago by the actual photographer. And still works, it was made by Konica. Uh, without this, we would not have the images of Pearl Harbor. This is Mr. Barnett Kleindance's camera. He invented the reflex camera in 1872. And we have a copy of the US patent the actual patent camera that we have up on the shelf is this one right at the second one top. This is a KGB spy camera. It's uh, on the Zippo lighter uh, format. It's a lighter and a camera. This is the Korea War in Vietnam uh, commercial graphic camera that was made by a graphic in New York. This had interchangeable lenses, telephoto, wide angle, zoom. We are taking more pictures today in any one day than we've probably taken at any one time in whole history because of the cell phones, because of the, uh, the media. There's so many outlets there with Twitter, uh, Facebook, all these media sources that these kids, the younger generation is using. But they're not keeping the pictures. They're not really thinking about long range for history. Virginia played a pivotal role in the Civil War, and perhaps no other event personifies this than the Battle of Newmarket. To learn more about the Battle of Newmarket, look no further than the Virginia Museum of the Civil War. 
Well, hello, my name is Major Troy Marshall. I'm the site director of the Virginia Museum of the Civil War and Newmarket Battlefield State Historical Park, uh, a museum of the VMI museum system. We have a, a large Virginia Museum of the Civil War, which really tells the, the war's uh, influence in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Uh, we have the Newmarket Battlefield State Historical Park, which has the Bushong Farm, uh, around which the VMI cadets charged. Uh, and we also have 300 acres of battlefield property. But we are a satellite campus of VMI. Uh, in 1864, 257 cadets, the youngest was only 15 years old, uh, were called up to be part of Breckinridge's army. And uh, that army was uh, put in, including the cadets. General Breckinridge, uh, first unwilling to put them in, finally says, put the boys in and may God forgive me for that order. Uh, 257 cadets go in, uh, they lose five killed, 47 wounded, and five additional cadets died, six of which are buried on the campus uh, to this day. So very much uh, VMI uh, looks north uh, to Newmarket. People come for, for very different reasons. Uh, for the Virginia Military Institute family, it's, it's to reconnect with where that institute's forebears, those Newmarket cadets, uh, actually fought uh, very bravely uh, and did a duty that in some ways maybe was unfair to them. The youngest cadet was only 15 years old. Average age was 18. And yet they were able to undertake that duty, uh, which today uh, symbolizes a cadet experience that sometimes it may be a difficult duty. Uh, we have people that are local um, that look at this as their history. Uh, and some of them have literally a history link with uh, the battlefield. We have people that would say, you know, my grandfather fought as a cadet at the Bushong Farm or, or my ancestor fought as a Union soldier. So it's a very special place uh, in that uh, kind of a category. People are curious. Um, people come here uh, in some ways just to get off the interstate and see a very uh, a wide open space, a green space, if you will. Um, we're on the Virginia Birding and Wildlife Trail System, so some people it's about history. Some people, it's about just connecting with nature as well. So all of those reasons are, are great reasons, you know, to visit your local battlefield. If you have an event you would like to feature, contact us. If you have a video to share on air, send it to us. And if you like what you see, check out the WVPT Facebook page and please hit the like button. Hey Virginia was brought to you by the people at WVPT Public Media. If you like what you see, please visit WVPT.net and let your voice be heard by contributing to your community public media station. Everance Financial is grateful to serve this community. As a faith-rooted financial services organization, we're dedicated to helping members grow more confident futures with their values in mind, a community that's doing better together.